This is John Elder Robeson, author of Look Me in the Eye. I'd like to read you this preview of my newest book, Be Different, Adventures of a Free-Range Aspergian, coming this March in print and ebook from Crown and from Random House Audio. Madison Square Garden, 1979. The New York concert was the high point of Kiss's Dynasty Tour, and we kicked it off with a bang and a flash. The band played loud enough to make your ears bleed, and our pyrotechnics would burn your eyebrows off if you got too close. We were five songs into the set. Firehouse had just ended. We killed the spotlights and got to work. Buzzes and clicks from the sound system suggested activity up on the blackened stage. The applause was over, and low ripples of noise washed through the audience as they waited for the next song. We had less than two minutes to make the change, and I'd prepared all day so I'd be ready to go when the lights went down. The crowd was calm. No one had started chanting. Yet. I had no intention of letting that mob of 20,000 fans get restless, so I moved as quickly as I could. It was only a short jump for them to move from lighting matches and chanting to lighting the place on fire, so I finished up fast before anything else could happen. I scampered off the edge of the stage as the musicians took their places in the dark. I turned around just in time to hear a pop, followed by a flash of hard white light from stage left. The opening chords of New York Groove barked out as Ace Freely turned to face the crowd. The main stage was still dark. A single spotlight illuminated Kiss's lead guitarist as he stood alone to play the opening riff. He'd been using an ordinary black Les Paul guitar for the past few songs. Now he held something different, something alive. The face of his instrument had transformed into a mirror glittering with a thousand lights. They moved and rippled in concert with the notes he played, a pattern of light that reached all the way to the back of the garden. It was a guitar unlike any other. Even the sound was different. It had a hard metallic bite, and the sound of the strings was punctuated by ticks as the lights flashed beneath them. No one had seen or heard anything remotely like that before. The crowd went wild as Ace's light swept over them in time to the music. The traditional order was suddenly turned upside down. At every concert before, spotlights had illuminated the stage. Tonight, a musician made his own light and threw it out over the audience. For that brief moment, in the face of all of Kiss's rock and roll thunder, Simple Radiance had stolen the show. It was my light shining from that stage. I had created that guitar and many others while working with rock and roll bands. I was 22 years old. That is a memory I cherish. One I know was made possible by Asperger's Centrum, a difference inside my brain. I developed the skills to create that guitar only because of those differences. I love to think back on my time touring with KISS, but I have many other, more painful memories that I've pushed to the back of my mind. I've moved on from my anxiety-ridden childhood, a time when I wasn't sure if I'd ever make it. In the years since, I've proven to myself and to the world that through hard work, patience, diligence, and good fortune, I could overcome the obstacles life and my Aspergian brain put in my path. I grew up to be a master musical technician, a business owner, an author, a father, and most important, a functioning adult who is valued by his family, friends, and society. Repressed memories of tougher times and the emotions associated with them may still come flooding back unexpectedly, spurred by an episode or event. That's exactly what happened a few years ago as I watched Billy the Kid, a documentary about an undiagnosed Aspergian 16-year-old in a small-town Maine high school. In one scene, Billy moves warily among his classmates. As he walks the halls, you see his eyes dart from side to side, constantly, looking for threats, like a lone deer in a forest filled with wolves. With a pang, I recognized his look the moment I saw it. That was me, in 10th grade, at Amherst Regional High School. Seeing his face, I experienced all the worry and anxiety of that time of my life in an instant. 
I knew exactly how he felt. Alone, scared, sure no one around him understood him, not even sure if he understood himself. A few weeks later, I showed the film to a therapist friend who dismissed Billy's look with a pat explanation. I've seen that before, he said. They call it furtive eye movements. It's common in people on the autism spectrum. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. When it comes to human interactions, I can't think of a single instance where that is true. Every expression and gesture means something. It's sometimes hard to figure out what the meaning is, but it always exists. I didn't need any help figuring out what Billy was feeling. I have felt the same thing myself too many times. He was wary, scanning the cafeteria continuously, watching for threats just as I had done in high school. With a sense of certainty that's rare in the world of psychology, I knew the therapist was wrong. Realizing that I had insight into what Billy was feeling, insight that a professional therapist, whom I trusted, didn't have, confirmed that I had to share my journey with others. Individuals are labeled different, geeky, abnormal, or even Aspergian or autistic at a young age. Among other things, these labels suggest that the people around them, their friends, family, teachers, and counselors, can't relate to their actions and expressions. That's understandable, but it doesn't mean that those actions aren't motivated by legitimate feelings and desires, or that those of us who are different aren't capable of achieving amazing things in our lifetime. There's so much talk about the disability of Asperger's, so much focus on what kids who are different can't do, that I thought it was time for a book about what they can do. Thanks to my Asperger's, I didn't have much luck making friends as a kid. I always said or did the wrong thing. Grown-ups, especially teachers, didn't know what to make of me. They knew I was smart, so they didn't understand why I misbehaved and never fit in. I couldn't do anything the way people told me to, which caused a ton of conflict. I had to find my own way. If my teachers wouldn't or couldn't teach me, I figured I'd have to teach myself. And that's exactly what I did. I learned from watching people, from reading a lot, and from experimentation. I developed tricks to overcome my weaknesses and exploit my strengths. The skills I've learned along the way, and my techniques for acquiring them in the first place, became the basis of this book. Despite a difficult childhood, I've achieved quite a few of the things regular people aspire to do, accomplishments that make me sound pretty normal. The thing is, because of my Asperger's, my path to accomplishing those things ended up being a little different from the normal route. Actually, it ended up a lot different. But I still reach goals anyone, different or not, would be proud to achieve. If you were recently diagnosed with Asperger's, or you have a child with Asperger's, or you work with Asperger children, autistic children, or just plain geeky kids in school or elsewhere, this is the book for you. I wrote Be Different because the existing prescriptive works on Asperger's were, to be frank, mostly clinical and or depressing. Not this one. I believe those of us with Asperger's are here for a reason, and we have much to offer. This book will help you bring out those gifts. My stories will focus on me, a guy with Asperger's, but even if you don't share my diagnosis, you may still relate to these tales. Millions of people with ADHD, other forms of autism, and even common geeks share many of my traits. After all, everyone feels like an outsider some of the time. I certainly hope hearing my stories and learning about the ways I coped with problems and found my path entertains you while also giving some useful insights into dealing with your own quirks or those of someone you care about.